everybody. Welcome to the Homeworkies podcast. And today we're really excited to have one of the stars of this weekend's Christmas movies on Hallmark. We have Light, the star of Lights, Camera, Christmas, John Brotherton. John, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Uh, so what we like to do when we have a new guest on this podcast is find out a little bit about what inspired you to get into acting to get started. Ah, okay. From the, from the beginning. Well, <laughs> yeah. I grew up I grew up with an amazing mom who had a love for the arts. Film and television was a kind of a uh, fabric in my household. It was um, like the Oscars were kind of the Super Bowl around where I grew up. And, and, and film was the topic of every dinner conversation. Um, and I'd go out to dinner with my mom and we'd sit and break down. We'd go to a movie and break down, you know, everything from the costumes, the casting, the directing. And this was me at a young age. She was taking me to, you know, the art house versus the blockbuster movies. So I thought every kid's uh, childhood was full of film and critique. Uh, and she just was, my mom was a dreamer in that regard, loves, just loved film. And I always had an early interest in it. I started going to drama camp when I was 10 years old. We'd spend the summer just putting on a production, learning the ins and outs of acting, improv, all the way from juggling, stage combat uh all kinds of crazy activities fell in love with it then and then kind of just had it on the back burner as a hobby for a long time until uh i was wrapping up college i had gotten uh i was studying business um and there was just something inside of me that uh was itching for something more so my whole soul took like a left turn right before my senior year of college and i realized if i put as much effort into what makes me happy this passion hobby thing over here as i do um this other world that i'm trying to get into then uh, maybe it'll bear fruit so i packed my bags i jumped on i-5 went south to la with nothing but the clothes in the back seat of my car and uh started in the old-fashioned way that's so, awesome yeah, yeah. That was 2003 that's great i i can relate to that because uh my my mom particularly is was the same about you know talking about whatever it is that we were watching she's not a big movie person herself but uh she she would always say you know she doesn't that we don't want to just mindlessly consume content like we <laughs> we need to think about it and what did we like what do we not like and and all of that and so I have a lot of memories and I like you I thought that every family was that way until I went to college and and I was like, oh you mean you guys don't endlessly analyze the films after yeah yeah them? I know <laughs> you know what the, the the cool thing though is to this day that's my mom and I's like uh main conversational topic is when we yeah. call hey are you watching this and what do you think about this and you got to see this and she's always been like my number one critic not just for me but like who i rely on i'm like hey yeah. she sees every movie in the theater and so i'll call her and be like you know is it worth checking this out and she's got a really honest eye uh and, and yeah. love the game. so very cool well, yeah. And and also, I think being a movie fan is such a great social tool because you can find something to talk about with almost anybody. Even oh, if they don't yeah. watch very many, they at least have one movie they like. And you'd be like, oh, right. can we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, you'll actually, hey, have you seen Top Gun? Or you yeah. go like the art house or you go TV, who you binge in? No, yes. it is. Right. At any party, anywhere, it's the ultimate conversational piece. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So you were on a soap for a while. I was, yes. Yeah. So yeah, one life to live, I think. Yeah, one life yeah. to live. I was Jared Banks. That was kind of my first break, really. Good name. Jared uh, it was Banks. awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, did you have any like fun, juicy plot lines, like oh, you have an evil yeah. twin or something like that? Well, <laughs> it, being on the soap was so much fun for that very reason because every plot line was wacky. <laughs> yeah. um, but mine, I was introduced as a, I was a con man. And I was conning my way into the family of the Buchanans, which is like the big wealthy family on the show. Um, and I con my way in by faking a DNA test that I'm like the long lost heir of Ace uh... Buchanan. And I'm, uh, so I'm trying to stake a claim on his estate. But the juicy storyline comes in when I fall in love uh, with who we think are basically were like an uncle and niece situation. Um, but uh, cause I faked my way in. Um, but the truth is I'm not, and I'm falling in love with this girl who thinks that I'm family 
And uh, so then she's toying with these crazy emotions that she can't believe that she's having. And, you know, so it, we, we, we were walking a fine line in story. Yeah. Time, sure. um, but then of course, you know, I reveal myself to her and uh, you know, you can yeah. imagine what ensues from there. Uh, but all the storylines on the soap were so funny. It was like, we always said it was kind of like acting class because in acting class, you always have like the most extreme scenes, right? It's like never, like you're never doing a boring scene in acting class. <laughs> soap opera was the same way. Every scene, like yeah. the stakes were so high. Someone, baby was kidnapped or person was being held hostage or, you yeah. know, the, who knows? But this yeah. it was so fun. I had so much fun. And with those, and it was in New York, I, you know, walking to work, walking to Central Park and the whole thing. Like, and it was kind of my first break yeah. in, you know, uh, the film and TV world. So, well, great. and the, the grind of doing a soap, I mean, oh, yeah. it's just unbelievable. They put out it, so much. You know, we were doing 90 pages a day, which is wow. like doing a feature film every day. Um, and it was very like, kind of like a blue collar acting job. Cause it was like show up in the morning, you grind all day, you go home and you get up, you do it. Schedule is the most kind of, it mirrors like a corporate. I remember when I first got my first contract was like, okay, you had two weeks paid vacation. And I'm like, oh, this sounds like I'm on, like, you know, some uh, corporate contract because other than that, it's year round. It's the yeah. only, you know, besides live TV, it's the only one that's year round. So fun. Um, yeah. You know, you love, if you actually love the craft soap opera beyond being like boot camp for actors because the pressure you're under to work so fast but if you love the craft you get to go to work every day and do it um the fact that it's year-round so i just yeah. had a, i had a blast yeah. I thought it was so fun ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes if the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Well, so you've been able to be in some pretty big name feature films. Uh, and so I'm curious what's that, what that is like being in Gardens of the Galaxy, being in Furious 7. Uh, what is that experience like to be in a big well, picture? You know, it's a always a pinch me moment. I mean, uh -huh. there's a the time you're on a set like that and you're going, this is, you know, and it really started back. My first real one was The Conjuring which at the time we didn't realize was going to turn into this like mega, mega, mega hit in that, in that genre world and have like Annabelle and then all these other things kind of come from it, a whole franchise from it. But, you know, it was my first time working with like, like big movie stars and getting a chance to really watch them work and take notes, you know, working with Patrick Wilson, Lon Riv Ron Livingston, Vera Farmiga and Lily Taylor, and then directed by James Wan, which ultimately led to Furious 7, which led to Guardians of the Galaxy. So that was an amazing first experience because those were such pros to work with. And then fast forward to, you know, James brought me along on Furious 7. That was a whole different world because that was just like massive, massive budget. You know, there was no limit to anything. It was just so awe-inspiring being on set these days where we'd have 300 different exotic cars around or you know some massive green screen set up with some car suspended in midair so they could put a camera from any angle and you know getting to be Kurt Russell's sidekick was a total pinch me moment because I just I picked his brain he was the most loving generous actor and I would constantly just pick his brain we'd just go back and forth you know he's so great too because he he likes to he's interested in other people and you don't always find that in like you know sometimes um big movie stars are more reserved and protected un understandably so but he was he's the kind of guy that would turn and be like all right 
name your top three movies. And it would just like going back to our old conversation, it would just like start conversation between us. He, uh, he was just such a cool guy. Um, and you know, so like I said, it's always a pinch me moment. I'm just trying to learn from all the greats that I would get, you know, I was so mm -hmm. lucky surrounded with on all those movies. Um, and you know, the other thing is when you're actually in the moment, then people are just people. That's the beautiful thing. Like Vin Diesel is a mega movie star, but when the camera is rolling, it's the great equalizer. Like there's nowhere to hide. It's just you and that other person. Um, and, um, you know, it's just about what's happening in that scene. And I'll, like, like working with a guy like Jason Statham in that movie, we have a whole scene together. And he was such a giving, he cared so much about the work, which I was so impressed about. Um, he really wanted to do the best possible work, which is really what it comes down to. It's always refreshing when you see these guys who have had great success and they're still just trying to do the best work possible. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. it hard in, in an action movie that where so much of it is going to be added in later. So you have to be told like, this is what it's going to look like. This is what's going to be doing. And uh, I mean, I, I know the uh, like smaller, smaller parts, but uh, I've always thought that would be tough to kind of envision. Okay. What's, what's it going to look like? What's it going to be like? Does the director yeah, I mean, help you? For sure. I mean, it's all, I guess that's part of the job, right? Like is be playing make believe. Um, but for example, when I was in guardians of the galaxy, I'm, you know driving or i'm a you know nova star blaster pilot so i'm driving around this like star blaster but really i'm in this cockpit that they had suspended in midair about 50 feet off the ground in this massive massive studio that's all green screen yeah that whole conversation on the, the loudspeaker james gunn's going okay so imagine you know there's action all around you they're flying by spaceships are blowing up you see down below and then they would like move the thing and i'm like move rocking around this big planes like moving me around you know and it's like can you walk me through now down below there's an explosion you're like oh you know and it's like constant reaction to like you know make believe yeah. um, but i always say that i play house for a living and it's kind of what we do we play we play for a living we play act it's ridiculous and hilarious and all that fun stuff at the same time but it's also like so magical. Like I'll, you know, you step into this thing. They're like, okay, here's your cockpit. You step into it. It's like getting elevated up. You got a crew of like 50 to hundred people around you. Again, you're just going, I can't believe this is what I'm doing for a living. How am I, yeah. this is how, you know, I get to pay my bills for now. So, uh, just so fun. So yeah. fun. Um, but you know, same with Fury seven, there was a lot of car driving stuff, um, where you're in a car sort of suspended against the green screen, the car's shaking around, you know, and, um, you just have to play along. Yeah. Interesting. Fun. I mean, come yeah. on. It's a blast. That would be, uh, so last, this last February, you won our HPA award, our Hallmark Pusket podcasting award for best new to Hallmark, but we were <laughs> wrong. You'd actually been in one before, <laughs> uh, with a uh, help for the holidays. Uh, Correct. so I actually haven't seen that one. Uh, but uh, that was your first introduction to Hallmark, right? That was, that was like, gosh, I want to say maybe 10, 10, 12 years ago, something like that. And that was my first introduction. I guess the difference is they call that like, uh, someone taught me the other day, like that it aired on Hallmark, but it was an acquisition, meaning like someone else produced it, shot it, and then Hallmark acquired it. Uh, these last two I've done have been Hallmark productions. I mean, even though this is all, right, technology, yeah. they, all they all air on Hallmark. Um, but yeah. some, sometimes Hallmark goes and buys a different production and puts it on, or you'll see like yeah. original programming. Like Mar, Mar Vista or companies Correct. like that. Yeah. yeah um, it, and this one was 2012. Okay. Yeah. That makes like, sense. Yeah. 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 Summer Glau, Help for the Holiday. It was so fun. That was such a great movie. Had one of the best Santa Clauses. Oh. Um, I have always thought Steve played such this great Santa Claus. He was so real. And I was like, this is the way you got to, when you want a real Santa Claus, you got to find someone that's just actually real and not playing a character. And Steve Larkin was his name. And he was like, Phew. he was such a great Santa Claus. I have uh, to watch that one. That sounds yeah, good. good. Really fun. My kids love it. Yeah. So you were on Fuller House. Oh, yeah. 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 So how did that end up happening? Did, did you just like audition or did they come to no, you? No, you know, or? it was interesting because like that was a, it's so funny because I've said this, like you'll audition for so many jobs in this town, get so close and then you get heartbroken or sometimes you get it. And then every once in a while, something will come along that is offered to you that you're, that sort of falls in your lap. And this was offered to me and it was um, because I had worked I'd auditioned for these casting directors many times. I'd worked for them before. I had also worked for the producing team on another sitcom 
Um, and kind of all their these worlds came together where the casting had pitched me and the production knew me and they were kind of like, yeah, let's do that. So I get this call and it at the time, none of the reboots had happened yet. Fuller House was the first to really do a genuine reboot. Not like do the same show with a new cast, like Hawaii Five-0. Right, right, yeah. This was the first time a show was like, okay, we're going to bring back the OG cast. This was before Roseanne or Will and Grace or anybody did that. So there's a big question mark, like, is this going to work or is this going to flop? And there had been buzz about it in pop culture, media or whatever, but I hadn't really thought much about it. So then I get a call one day from my agent and he says, did you hear they're bringing Full House back? And I said, yeah, I kind of heard something about that. And they're like, did you watch Full House? And I was like, well, actually I didn't. Um, but I, of course, was aware of it because of pop culture. And he was like, well, you know, the DJ character. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's Cameron, Can Candace Cameron. And he's like, yeah, he goes, so you've been offered a five episode arc uh, to recur as a guest star. It may that has an option to turn into eight episodes. And I'm like, awesome so fun sitcom love it go work with candace great um no idea that it would quickly those five episodes turned into not only eight but then nine our, our storyline sort of took off the first season and then after first season and the success of the show they came around and offered me you know to come on contract which was just such a blessing it was so much fun to be a part of that show um, so it was just a random phone call that turned into like a life-changing event for sure. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And what a great cast to be a uh, part of. I mean, honestly, like such a dream and it was a, couldn't have come at a better time in my life. I had small children and they got to experience the show and be around the show. And like, they were fans of the show, of course, and their friends. And I got to throw them in the show. Um, it was like the ultimate like dad move to be able to be like on Fuller House when my kids were like in elementary school. They, they were just yeah. they were stoked. It was a blessing. That's so cool. much fun. That, that whole cast, top to bottom. There's a reason they've stayed close all these years. There's no, there's not a bag of egg in the group. They're just incredible people. A lot of love. I mean, so mm -hmm. much love. Um, starting with rest, God bless his soul, but Bob was yeah. the best. He was the ultimate love machine like he just wanted everyone to be happy and hug and tell everyone he loved them and it was just he set the tone and we were all so grateful to be in his you know good graces yeah yeah so, and to this day there's some of my best friends and having to work with candace and stuff it's just been such a joy yeah i mean a lot of of uh people that have gone on to be in in you know christmas in the christmas movie family of course jody yeah, totally. and candace of course yeah. um and uh, similar fan base you know it's like the yeah feel you want to feel good yeah we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Then you're in the Christmas contest. Mm -hmm. And this one had a kind of a nutty sensibility to it that you don't typically yeah. see on Hallmark. Yeah. Uh, especially that scene where Candace like, is sobbing over the tree. And she's like uh -huh. tearing it apart. Yeah. And I was like, okay. what's happening? That was intense. That was intense. That was intense. You know, yeah. they were going for it. I think Hallmark's trying to expand a little bit. They're trying to add some comedy, some rom com element. Mm -hmm. And the fun thing about comedy is it makes drama more intense. Yeah. It's like in a scary movie. If you give them a few laughs, then the scares are going to be even harder or yeah. bigger, you know? And I think in drama, it's the same way. Like if you can keep someone's emotions off guard and keep them on a bit of a roller coaster, then it, it allows for a scene like where she goes crazy on that tree to really hit home. Yeah. Um, because the rest of it, we're having this like lighthearted fun and rom-com and um, she was so fantastic in that. We had, gosh, that was so fun. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we got to tap into the sitcom-y comedy and then really lay into the Hallmark drama kind of all at the same time. 
Well, it must've been nice since you already had worked together. You already had the chemistry and you could just go right, right away. It was, I remember the first day, our first scene was actually the first scene of them seeing each other, but not knowing we were a part of the same contest. And it was like literally picking up where we left off. I mean, because we play X's in the movie. Um, we had just gotten done playing X's on the show. Uh, and it was, I mean, it was just it totally, you know, it was, it was a perfect transition. We had so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you have lights, camera, Christmas coming up, which, um, it's one of my most anticipated of this season of, of Canada Christmas. Uh, I mean, I love Kimberly. She's uh, so good. Oh my gosh. So she's good. so talented. Holy cow. <laughs> like so talented. She blew me away. Yeah. And I love Laura Solsis. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's great. And it just seemed like, a, it seems like a great group together. It was so much fun. I mean, have you heard what it's about? So it's, they're making a Christmas movie in the Correct. town. If you thought Christmas contest was a little wacky, this takes it to a whole new level because <laughs> we are making a Christmas movie in the Christmas movie. So super meta. Um, but I think the fans are going to love it because we get to pull back the onion a little bit. You get to kind of, you know, see behind the curtain and be on set. There's some scenes where, you know, you're shooting the movie within the movie and then it's like cut and you pull back and all of a sudden you're on a movie set. Um, and we go from being the, these characters to the actors portraying the characters. Um, and, uh, so I play, yeah, I play the, the quote unquote king of Christmas movies, and she's, you know, the small town uh, girl who owns a boutique a fashion store. And uh, we end up recruiting her to be part of the movie. And of course, you know, love ensues, chaos ensues, comedy ensues. And, you know, it's just all the warm fuzzies. Yeah. So she's from the small town. She's like a, uh, she owns a, a, a store and they end up getting her to do the costumes for the movie. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so our our the lead costumer on the film falls out. You know, we're in a pinch. We're in this small town. What do we do? Uh, we're up against the clock and time and money and the whole thing. And uh, we stumble upon uh, her and her shop. Um, my co-star falls in love with her frat fashion. My co-star in the film, uh, who's another like movie star, falls in love with uh, Kimberly's character. And, you know, get her to follow her dreams and all that good stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the director, uh, David Weaver is oh. a friend of our podcast and Man, he's done so he, many good ones. Like such a talented dude. I just picked his brain. We'd go out afterwards and sit down and, and I have such a curiosity and love for behind the camera stuff. That's where I ultimately I, I want to end up. And he was the perfect professor. Like I could really just talk to him about the nuts and bolts of filmmaking and lenses and shots and composition. And he uh, he's just studied um, and has such a love for film and filmmaking um uh, and uh it was uh i was just so grateful it was him on this film i hadn't worked with him before and but uh, you know immediately i realized okay we're in really good hands and i hope really hope i get to work with him again yeah yeah so in in when you get cast in one of these films do you do you do anything particular to develop the chemistry with kimberly in like in this one and, and do a chemistry read or anything like that well, this one in particular, as soon as I, you know, I always try to get to to wherever we're going for this one. It was in Vancouver, BC, a few days early. Um, they, they, you know, we tend to have stuff we have to take care of, costume design, all this. I have a pretty crazy costume in this, so I had to come in early for them to build it. I, you know, play Santa within the movie. The movie within the movie, I play Santa. So oh, nice. But like, cool Santa. So they had to, like, custom fit <laughs> me in this, like, you know. Um, so... To answer your question, in those few days leading up, it's like, you know, I called Kimberly, I introduced myself, I'm like, let's get together, whether we, you know, every actor is different, some like to read, you know, the material, some just want to get to know each other, we just sat down to have dinner together and got to know each other, um, you know, and then I like to, you know, I'm one to read, so, you know, hey, can we just run through the script a couple times, just say the yeah. word, just sort of like, um, at least, you know, in the beginning, like first couple days, um, but more than anything, it's just actually being with the human being. So even, you know, material aside, it was like just sitting down, having dinner, picking her brain, understanding her as a human, um, and just getting a, to be familiar and comfortable with each other. So mm -hmm. we, 
ultimately it's because you want to play once you yeah. get it's like when you work hard in preparation you get to play hard when the camera's rolling and that's when the magic happens yeah well i'm excited for this one to uh get a little meta on on, on, <laughs> on yeah it's gonna be fun it really is it's there's we lean into it on this we have we have some fun Hey, this is David from the Piecing It Together podcast, a podcast about movies and the movies that inspire them. For over four years each week, a guest and I take a look at a new movie through the lens of what other movies we think were either an influence or connect in some other way. It's a fun, unique way to discuss films that leads to a great list of other movies to check out that either explore the same themes and ideas or maybe utilize similar filmmaking techniques including special episodes in our side series that twist the format we've done over 200 episodes so there's bound to be one on a film you've been thinking about and want to dig deeper into so check us out on all the major podcasting apps and at piecingpod.com well we have some fun silly holiday themed questions okay in the interview okay first one what is your favorite holiday drink oh gosh um you know, this is going to sound so boring, but Martinelli's sparkling cider, oh. uh, frankly, because it's a memory of when I was a kid, I would always, you know, we'd get it for Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And now that my kids love it for them, it's like, oh, it's the time we get to get that sparkling apple cider. Yeah. So it, and it's totally just seasonal around our house. Um, and I mean, mostly in the store, I know you can get it year round, but like, really it's comes yeah. out in the holidays. So that to me is just sums it up. Um, and then, you know, look, good glass of red wine. We, we always do, uh, a prime rib on Christmas. And uh -huh. so there's always, we're always going to break open one, you know, quality bottle uh -huh. of red wine we've been saving. Um, so cool. that's, yeah. All right. Next question. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Cheesecake. My wife makes the best cheesecake on the planet and it is a holiday tradition in our house. It's a must. We don't let her off the hook. <laughs> she may have tried to skip once or twice because of whatever she, there is no way <laughs> Christmas and Thanksgiving. She has to kind of do it back to back because uh -huh. we have both. Um, but her cheesecake is notorious. Is um, it just like plain cheesecake or do you put fruit on it, top or? No, we don't. It's plain. I mean, it's so good. You can't mess with it. She's, yeah. she grew up in Jersey. It's very, it's just mm. old fashioned, traditional and it's, it's fantastic. And yeah. there's, there's no denying it. So maybe <laughs> with some homemade whipped cream. That's the other thing we'll make. So, okay. What yeah. is your favorite, uh, Christmas song or Carol? go oh, my goodness um gosh i don't know if i have a particular favorite but i i just love all the old um you know we throw on the records and we you know tell alexa to just play christmas music and all the old mm -hmm. you know when he's in the when you know you get dean martin or frank sinatra or louis or any of these you know sammy yeah. davis singing the classics that's where you know i mean the, the new ones are fun and mariah carey so that sounds like christmas but i like the old yeah. i mean you know, give me the old stuff. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. What's your favorite classic Christmas movie? Uh, hands down a Christmas story. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is my favorite. I love yeah. that Ted Turner, when he sold TBS, he said, fine, here can take it. But my one caveat is on Christmas day forever. Uh, Christmas story plays for 24 straight hours on repeat. So uh, it's a tradition of ours. You turn on that TV, you go to TBS, and there's a uh, Christmas story playing over and over. I just think I didn't know that was part of the deal. <laughs> such a fun, I think it's one of the coolest stories. Yeah. Ted was also, we were in the same fraternity. So he was like, you know, someone that my, he was like notorious in, uh, in uh -huh. our, family. but yeah. So he, when he sold TNT and TBS, he put that in the contract that on Christmas Day, uh, you have to play Christmas story <laughs> all day back and to back. I've never understood people who complain about that. There's literally a million other channels or you oh. can watch anything else. Like who cares? Totally. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. I know. I, <laughs> it's it, such a weird thing to totally. complain about to me. You know, uh, and then, you know, after that, of course, I love, I love a home alone. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, fun one. Um, but yeah, no Christmas story, hands down. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, which one is your favorite Scrooge or the Grinch? Oh, well, I'm going to go with Scrooge only because of the movie Scrooged um, with Bill Murray back mm -hmm. from that was, you know, gosh, was it late 80s or early? Right. Yeah. At yeah. 
80 or 89. Um, but another movie that I remember seeing with my mom breaking down. Yeah, it was funny and it was clever and fun, but also just so well done and so well. I mean, he's so fantastic. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just, yeah. So that's what comes to mind. Yeah. And especially Carol Kane is my favorite in that oh, movie. Oh my gosh. She's so <laughs> funny. She's so good in it. She's so funny. Yeah. Oh man. She is so funny in it. It's just classic. And then you yeah. got Bobcat. You forget like these characters pop oh, out. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I forgot you're in this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, which do you like better? Clear lights or colored? We, our tree is all, it's covered in, in clear lights. Um, it's, there's something, not that I don't like colored lights, uh, but there's something just very classic and simple about uh, clear lights that, mm -hmm. yeah, our, our tree is covered in. Which would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Snowball fight, for sure. <laughs> With my kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so uh, it was so fun because I'm in LA, so we don't have that much snow here ever. Uh, but we'll go up. We, we usually take some sort of trip to the, one of these mountains once a year. And we were in Big Bear one year when it absolutely, my kids, my first time my kids got in to be like a blizzard whiteout. And we had such an epic snowball fight where we were just laughing hysterically the whole time. And it was just like one of those memories you're like, this is something I'll never forget. And the whole family, mom, dad, me, I mean, it was everybody. So it was just, yeah, so fun. Yeah. That sounds fun. Uh, all right. Did you, do you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? I would say I'm an efficient gift wrapper. I can be fast uh -huh. uh, and with, with quality, uh, <laughs> but not necessarily over the top uh, yeah. perfection. My mom and my dad, uh, both, they're like the two that anytime packages show up to my house, they are like, but how? Um, they're all about it come, looking like it came out of, you know, the magazine. Um, and so, but I, I'm right in the middle. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm efficient. I'm not necessarily, uh, you know, storefront worthy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? You know, it was funny. I just had this conversation. Um, I, I kind of do because Hallmark gifted me one that's pretty awesome. Uh, this is the Hallmark channel on it. Um, nice. So I have that. And then I have a version of one. It's actually a sweatshirt, but it looks like a, um, and it's, it's a cut it out. It's um, Dave Coulier did a fundraiser. Oh, so nice. it's a cut it out a Christmas sweater, even though it's a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. um, that in my, in my, my Hallmark channel, I have a, a branded Hallmark channel of the <laughs> Christmas sweater. Uh, yeah. Well, very good. You answered all the questions. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. This was a lot of fun to get to meet you and we're really excited about the new movie. Totally. My pleasure. Thank you again for the, my big award. And was that February? I think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was, yes. No, that was a great honor and uh, I'm a pleasure to be back and, and, uh, yeah, come check out November 5th, eight, seven central. Do you have social media or anything you want to share? At John Brotherton. Yep. That's my handle. I'll be sharing some, you know, some stuff uh, for the movie and from the movie in the next few days and uh, yeah, enjoy it. Awesome. Well, it's great to meet you and hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. <laughs> We'd like to thank John for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to meet him and talk to him and let us know what you think about all the things we talked about in the uh, comments or on Twitter. And you, know, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, the Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And especially during this holiday season, it helps people to find the podcast. So please, please put those reviews in. Also, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, which is so much fun, and the merch store where you can get all kinds of festive uh, holiday designs. So check that out. And uh, thanks again to John, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye.